92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com, streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5, and soon to have taped audio and video on RTC Channel 4. Hello again, Scott. Hello, sir. Scott, back in the studio with us. What a guy. Got his own coffee cup now and just ready to go. <laughs> He's official. He is absolutely official. That's right. I told you not to look him in the eye. He'd say. <laughs> That's what happens you look at the camera. Isn't yeah. it? All of a sudden you're in deep trouble. Yep. John Alley is our guest. He is the president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure to be here. And of course, we're going to bring up to date on all the happenings at Woodlawn Hospital, including the Board of Trustees. Board meeting, meeting yesterday. Uh, it was our annual audit presentation of the 2000. 2015 uh, fiscal year for the hospital. You know, we we have other independents come in. We want them to look at what we've done to make sure that uh, all the financial records are up to snuff and how they should be. Is this a requirement of all? Is, this is a requirement. Okay. Of, yes. Uh, we can opt to either have the Indiana State Board of Accounts do it or an independent uh, audit firm do it. And we like to go with the independent audit firm there. I hate to say it, but maybe a little bit more thorough and uh, gives us a little more feedback. We get some benchmark information from them. So yesterday, that was primarily most of our board meeting was going over that audit report. Uh, we again once rece uh, received the unqualified opinion, which means everything's okay. And the, the other part that they provide to us is they look at not only where Woodlawn's at, we get a report that compares us to state of Indiana, regional and national hospitals and critical access hospitals and it kind of benchmarks us say you know here's where those folks are your size or all hospitals it's yes uh, to both we okay. can we compare our size and then all hospitals in general within Indiana the regions and stuff like that so that's kind of nice for us to look where do we rank in in relation to where those other hospitals are and for the most part we've seen some steady improvement over the past three years we're, we're getting closer to where we be and want to be few of those, you know, we're, we're beating state average, we're beating national average for hospitals our size, which is a good thing. It means that the staff is doing what they need to do. Some other areas, you know, we might be right at or slightly below, so that's where we need to concentrate to make some improvements. But overall, very good audit report. Uh, the auditors are very pleased with what they saw. Very few recommendations, and we get the same recommendation every year. Is auditors are big about internal control and, and segregation of duties. We don't have enough bodies to segregate everything they want. So there's a few of their audit uh, recommendations. It's the same one every year, and, and they have to do that. They bring it to the board's attention that you could have a potential error here or problem because you've got one person doing two to three functions. For a hospital our size, that's kind of normal. We try to you know move stuff around if we can, if it makes sense, so we have you know maybe more people handling a function so that one person couldn't go in there and, and do something they shouldn't. But again, kind of hard for us to do based upon our size. And it's, you know, we kind of know every year, we kind of predict we're going to see that same recommendation again. But other than that, very good audit, uh, very pleased with uh, you know, how we did last year and, and uh, a positive bottom line. Primarily a financial audit, correct? Financial audit. The reason I ask that is because I know that Woodlawn strives for high customer satisfaction. But that is a separate thing from that's, what we're talking yes, about. That's separate okay. from this. And we were just looking at uh, you know, where we're probably going to fall uh, in 2016 when the report comes out in July. You know, five stars, the highest rating, which we were very fortunate to get last time. We're probably going to come in about a four and a half this time, but they don't give you the half. So, you know, uh, so we reviewed today some of those areas where we saw a slight decline in some of our areas. And uh, it's not so much that we've declined, it's that everybody else has gotten better. Because what they look at is not only your, your score, but your percentile ranking. So there's some areas that, uh, you know, last year we were in the, the 90th percentile as far as the patients. 90% of the people polled said they give us a, a five-star rating for that. That put us in the 80th percentile. That means we were in the this year we've got that same score we're still in that 90th percentile of, of 90 percent of favorable remarks but we're maybe in the 88th percentile that means everybody else has upped their game and they're doing better so that just tells us okay we can't remain comfortable yes we're doing well but now we've got to do better if we want to keep ahead of our competition so good for the patients though good for the patients you know and and that's what it's all about it's about the patients and, and their perception and uh, you know we think we do a good job but it's nice to get that feedback from the patient because 
even though I think I'm doing a super job, I might not be make, meeting your expectations, and that's what we have to know. So we discussed that with the leadership today to go back to their departments and say, here's where we're going to be. Uh, you know, we are going to drop from a five to a four, most likely. I don't have the official report yet. We're trying to just, you know, do our own little interpolation of that. But here's the areas where we've fell down in our percentile ranking. And uh, that's the hard part for people to understand. We get two scores. You know, we get 90% of the people say they absolutely love us, but it dropped in percentile. And that's where your star rating comes from is how you're compared to your peers. So that's where we got to work on say, you know, our peers are doing better than they did last year, so they've moved up. That makes us, we're going to have to move up and do better also. Exactly. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something to strive for. We've set now some goals for the upcoming year. And hopefully by this time next year, we're back at that five-star rating because we know what areas we're a little lax in as far as the patient perception. And, uh, you know, one of the things is uh, that surprised us, everybody in the group was, we kind of got a low percentile ranking on hospital cleanliness. And when we go in, everybody says, what's the cleanest hospital we've been in? But what we're not doing, and, and we discuss this, is we've purposely, when a patient has gone for an x-ray or a lab and they're out of their room, that's when we go in and clean because we don't want to disturb them. Well, they don't see us doing that. So they don't know their room was clean because we worked there when they were there. So, you know, simple fix says, let's leave a little tent. I was going to say, says, leave a note, you know, sure. Hi, I'm, sure. you know, I'm... Welcome back. And I'm Alice. While you were gone, I've cleaned your room. <laughs> right. It's just little things like that because that's how we get rated with CMS. So, you know, we're doing an excellent job. People just don't know we're doing it because we try to do it when they're not in the room so as not to disturb them. So we got to find just a little better way to do those things. And, you know, it's just going to make us a better organization, patient better experience. And that's what it's about. It's, you know, it's not a patient satisfaction survey. It's a patient experience survey. What was your experience? And we want to make sure it's the best we can do. Excellent. The other thing, uh, we had a short presentation uh, from our surgery director. Uh, for the orthopedic surgeons, uh, it's called power equipment, in, in which is the tools that they use as they're doing, you know, either their shoulders or knees or hands or wrists or whatever. The equipment we have is about 12 years old, and it's at absolutely at its end of useful life. It's actually past that, and it was kind of interesting as we were doing the presentation to the board to ask permission to uh, replace that equipment. One broke, uh, so you know, fortunately we had a backup. So they did go ahead and approve us. To get some new uh, equipment, uh, a little more state of the art. What we currently have is uh, corded, so we have to plug it in. So you know the staff has to work around the cords. And then the new technology now is all battery powered. So now we can do away some of those cords, which you know two things: less clutter in the OR, less potential for a trip hazard for staff. So uh, looking forward. Hopefully, uh, within the next two to three days, we'll have the new equipment in because we authorized the materials to issue a PO yesterday so we could get this stuff coming in so we don't have an interruption in our service. Well, in many cases, too, that equipment is not only outdated, but there's no maintenance support on it anymore. That's the issue. You, right. you start, to, there's just no parts for these things, and that's kind of where we're at with our current equipment. It broke, and they were scouring, trying to find something in the country, and, you know, what we can do, and, and very grateful to that, we called Pulaski Hospital, and we borrowed theirs as a backup. And they do the same with us. So, you know, yes, we're in competition with some of our neighbors, but when it comes down to that patient experience again, we help each other out. And that's the nice thing about it. Uh, we can have some friendly competition, but when it really gets down there for that patient safety, we're going to help each other out. And we have a good working relationship with Pulaski uh, along those lines. We share equipment a lot. Excellent. We have a, a lot of staff that work at both facilities, and that kind of helps, again, with the culture between the two organizations. Sure. Then we got into the financials for the month of April, and uh, early in the month I was kind of, you know, singing the blues, thought it was going to be a really <laughs> bad month, but it really uh, kind of changed toward the end. So we had a gross revenue about $10.5 million for the month, wrote off uh, in our deductions from revenue about $6.3 million, so that left me $4.2 million to, to kind of play with, that's, uh, you know, to pay the bills with. Had operating expenses of $4.1 million, so we actually was able to post small profit of $84,000 for the month of uh, April. Early in the month, that that surprised me. I did not think we were going to do that. Year-to-date basis, uh, we're still ahead of our budget. We had anticipated through the end of April have about a $1.5 million loss. 
we got about a four hundred ninety five hundred thousand dollar profit year to date. So we're hoping that trend continues because we take that bottom line at the end of the year and we reinvest it back into the hospital, back into technology. I think so, that's an important consideration. You need to maybe pause just a second. What happens to that profit money? Yeah, because it, people it, want to know. Yeah, there are not shareholders that this money goes to. It is put back into the organization, like the surgery equipment. You know, it it's. I said, can I go to Sears and buy it? Because they look like drills. And I was informed, no, you can't. Uh, but they're just, they look like a, a drill. But, you know, it's $90,000 for two drills. Um, so, you know, we take the, the profit that we generate, that's what buys the equipment. And, you know, we were talking earlier about MRI. And, you know, we, we put a new MRI in oh, six, eight months ago. And I think it's the state second, of the art, actually. State of the art. It's one of the few in the state of Indiana that's got what's called silent technology. So those who've had an MRI two, three years ago, you know, it sounds like you're in the middle of a train wreck. You know, with this new technology, it's much quieter. It's not as disruptive to the patient. You know, that's the stuff that we take our profit and we put back into the, into the infrastructure to give the best possible experience we can for the patient. So, you know, they, they don't have to come in there and say, I'm scared to death of the MRI. It's so noisy. Not anymore. It's a lot quieter. Uh, it's a little more open than they used to be. So if you're slightly claustrophobic, this helps a little bit and uh, you know so that's what we try to do all all the profits they go back into the infrastructure into equipment upgrades within the hospital to meet the demands of, of our patients excellent and that was pretty well the board meeting it, it took uh, like I say the audit took quite a while okay. I give you the, the really re, readers digest version but the auditors go in depth what they looked at what internal controls they went through that way the board's got a good feeling that yes somebody other than us is looking at that financials and it is, uh, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to do. So that probably took half to three quarters of the board meeting just going over the audit. John, before we get back together at the end of the month of June, we have a foundation golf tournament coming up. The golf tournament's coming up, right. yes. And uh, you, I'm drawing a blank on the date right now. Uh, June the 18th. I, I think it's, yeah, it's a, in the... In I believe the, it's a Saturday, maybe June the 18th. It's going to be during the week. I think oh, okay. it's a, it's a th Thursday. It's a it, Thursday. It, it, I think the 16th. Perhaps. Yeah. And, we'll uh, check that out. And, Two different flights. We got right. a morning flight and an afternoon. So if it's one of those where you know, you want to get home early, sign up for the morning. If you want to, you know, more of an you know, go to the office in the morning and be off in the afternoon, come out for the afternoon flight. And it's, it, it benefits the foundation, though, which is the, the key foundation. thing. Here. Yes, and what the the foundation does again, it's kind of the fundraising uh, entity out there that helps support the hospital. So they'll have a project, and you know, lots of times right now, I know they're working on something to help beautify the hospital. It's a, they're wanting to get some artwork to put in different spots throughout the... Uh, S Scott forgot to turn his phone off. Uh, we, we were trying to... You know, yeah, there's interjecting a little music in the program. Yeah, I was just trying to find this date for you and I'm hitting buttons on my phone. I apologize. But, you know, they're going to try to put some artwork in the different right. hallways because your healing process has a lot to do with the environment you're in. So Absolutely. what we're trying to do is brighten that up and uh, we recently just I don't know if you've been out there recently replaced a lot of the hallway lights uh, with LEDs as opposed to the old fluorescent world of difference it, it brightens up the whole facility so it's not quite as, as dim and dingy I guess for lack of a better term and we've got a lot of comments from folks saying wow this is such an improvement so we're looking at those other things other than just the, the pills and, and the procedures what can we do from an environment to help that healing process get you into the hospital when you have to be there but our goal is to get you home that's where you want to be so we're, we're looking at those things we think some artwork different areas in the hospital will help brighten up those hallways again make it just a little better environment for you to come into and hopefully speed up that healing process probably a little early to tell but are there any particular agenda items that might be coming up at the end of june i think at that point we'll again i know it sounds early but we'll start with the uh, budget process okay. we'll, we'll try to make some assumptions get with the board say what do you want to see from from the board perspective where do you want us to go where do you want us to be next year and use that as a basis and we start putting the, the budget together for 2017 we do know there's going to be some major changes coming in our reimbursement from the government agencies medicare uh, it's going to be much more quality based so what we're looking at now from our physician practices they are going to be at risk uh, for not meeting quality standards so now that and I'll just pick if they're getting ten dollars now for a payment they're gonna put 20% of that at risk so if they're not meeting certain quality standards 
we're going to go get eight dollars. So it's going to be to our benefit to make sure we're adhering to those quality standards, and they're not that hard. We just got to make sure that we're meeting those standards that you, as a patient, expect when you come into one of our clinic offices. Okay. Scott pulled it up Thursday, June seventeenth. Correct. That is correct. Seventeenth. Okay. okay. There you go. Now, as, as we talk about, you know, Woodlawn Hospital and the things, uh, you, you continue to grow in terms of replacing equipment, things that you're trying to do to keep up patient needs. Yes, and, you know, technology and healthcare, whatever we buy today is probably going to be obsolete by the end of the week. So what we try to do is buy today what we know is going to meet our needs for the next three to seven years. And sometimes that's the hard thing to do, looking at crystal ball, and especially when you talk into like the radiology equipment, there's just massive amount of changes coming in that. That so we try to go out and say, okay, what's going to happen? Can we wait one more year? Because we know next year, you know, there's going to be a new widget of some sort that's going to come out that's going to meet the needs that we need to have in our facility. So, you know, the the staff spent a long time, you know, uh, talking to reps and, and going on the internet and looking. What is new technology? What is some of this stuff that we know is in getting ready to be released? We want to be able to, to get that in here if it meets our needs. One of the things that the staff is good about, just because it's new doesn't mean that we have to have it. So, you know, they know that they're not going to just go out and spend money to buy something because it's new. It has to meet a need that we see for this community and for the patients we serve. John Alley, as always, we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks very much, and uh, thanks to everybody at Woodlawn Hospital for the excellent health care they provide. You know, it's, I've said it before, uh, they make me look really good. Uh, we've got excellent folks out there. A smart leader hires people as much smarter than himself, and I've got a lot of folks that know far more than I do. You know, I help lead and direct, but they make me look good and make my job really easy. John Alley, thanks again. Thank you.